And what's up everybody, another beautiful day on the Dragonflight beta and we're back with some raid guides and previews. Today we're taking a look at Heroic Dathia ascended in the new raid Vault of the Incarnates. <clears throat> now this is beta testing so a lot of things can change, be added or scrapped altogether. Now this fight kind of blew me away. Dathea ascended, now with the power to push people away. Don't we all feel like that sometimes? Dathea will cast Raging Burst throughout the fight, targets a location, deals a chunk of nature damage within 6 yards to any one hit, and it also spawns a Raging Tempest, which is a violently rotating column of air that is in contact with both the surface of the earth and a Cumulonimbus cloud, more commonly known as a tornado. It's stationary and deals a big chunk of damage to anyone who runs into it and knocks them up into the air. These Tempests also deals raid-wide damage every 4 seconds more tempest, more raid damage, and every now and then the boss will cast crosswinds. Like an angry breeze? This adjusts the location of all active raging tempests. So like last boss in Mechagon Workshop, these tempests get an arrow pointing towards their next location and on top of this a circle on the ground showcasing exactly where they'll stop. So they can travel across the entire platform or just a few yards forward. Now speaking of violently rotating columns of air, there's also Cyclone. Boss whips up a vortex at her location, say her middle of the main platform, dealing ticking raid damage and pulls players towards her. If you get sucked into the middle, you get knocked far up into the air. Now, to spice things up a bit, there's Empowered Conductive Mark. Mark several players in the raid, dealing a bit of damage and ticking damage every 0.5 sec, and you take 10% increased nature damage, which can stack. Now, on top of this, they get a 5-yard blue circle around them, and if another player touches that circle, they refresh Conductive Mark's duration on that player, and gets conductively marked as well. So getting knocked around by tornadoes is a fast way of spreading this all over the place. And if a marked player runs over another marked player, they instead get one additional stack of the 10% nature damage taken debuff and refresh their timers. Now on top of this, those pesky tanks get Zephyr slammed, deals a ton of physical damage and knocks them back. Now each impact increases the damage and knockback taken by 50%. So I'm wondering, how many of these you can stack up with cooldowns and using stuff like Life Grip and Warlock Gate to not fly? off? I mean, stacking up like 10 plus of these and then learn how to fly. To top this off, whenever boss's primary target isn't in range, she starts breaking wind, dealing a large amount of nature damage to the active tank. Now at 100 energy, Dathea will start coalescing storms, spawning a ton of adds. And around the main platform, you have three smaller platforms, a bit like Cymox and Sepulcher. Now on the main boss platform, you'll get a volatile infuser ad, and on one of the small platforms, you get another volatile volatile infusers, as well as six Thundercaller elementals. So the volatile infusers on the main platform needs to be tanked, deals a large amount of nature damage to the tank, and spawns windy swirls around the platform, which hurts if you cuddle with them. Well cast Diverted Essence, which needs to be interrupted, increases the Thea's damage by 5% for 20 seconds periodically throughout the fight. So do interrupt that. But more importantly, on death, this ad will explode with blowback, which knocks players away from it, and you will use this to get over to whichever side platform that currently has ads on it. Keep in mind, if a player has Conductive Mark, you do not want to stack near this ad, unless your goal is to wipe the raid. Luckily, you usually get a set of marks just as this ad spawns, and they'll be gone within 15 seconds, during which you kill the ads anyway. Over on the platform, the small ads needs to be interrupted and gather up. Go, go, grippy hands, if you have it. So you stack them up on the volatile infusion stun and nuke him down and make sure all the small adds die before the volatile infuser. And then you use the infuser's blowback to get back to the main platform. Now like Mythic Zymox, when you visit one of these side platforms you're afflicted by Thunderbolt, which deals nature damage every two seconds and anytime it deals damage you get one stack of static cling. It's a very clingy static, which increases Thunderbolt's damage, so the longer you stay up there, the more damage you take and sending the same people multiple times will result 
result in them taking a ton of damage. So my guesstimate is that we'll have two teams alternating as the debuff runs out in time to go every other platform. And you will need at least one tank and one to two healers depending on tuning. How many DPS you need is, well, you need enough DPS to kill him before boss gets 100 energy again. Best I can do. Now as the boss spawns all of these adds, phase one just continues. So while you have a team over on one of the platforms, anyone on the main platform still deals with all of the aforementioned mechanics and then the fight just cycles on like this with an ever increasing amount of tornadoes swirling around dealing more and more raid damage and increasing the potential that you slip up and get hit. So it's pretty much when you're on the main platform stay spread around boss at all time. If you get conductive mark be careful with how you move and players without marks should aim to move further away from marked players especially during cyclones pull in effect. Of course marked players shouldn't cuddle either so really just spread at all time. Keep an eye on tornadoes near you and track crosswinds timers you know when they're about to swirl away. And just don't be Omega Papega with the conductive marks and you'll be fine. And yeah that's pretty much it for the Thea Ascended. If they make major changes to the fight and we get to test it again I'll revisit this otherwise I'll drop an updated guide once the raid goes live. Let me know in the comments what you think about the fight. Don't forget the usual stuff like comment subscribe and ring that notification bell it really helps me out. I stream progression and testing on Twitch, Thursdays and Sundays, and whenever there's raid testing announced. Don't forget to check out my Patreon if you want to help support me, my work, and my goal of upgrading my computer. It gives you access to the stanky Discord where you can get help with anything raiding related, and there's a ton of awesome people to help you out. And speaking of awesome people, make sure to check out the Liquid Women in Warcraft Discord if you want a supportive and safe Warcraft community. I'll leave a link to the description below. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.